We're kicking off with Shane McMahon, who broke the internet earlier this year after it was revealed that he had spoken to AEW talent about possibly joining the company in what would be a massive move. Well, now McMahon has met with Tony Khan, as it's reported by Fightful that the pair came together on Monday, July 29th, in an office at a private Arlington airport. The meeting saw Khan and McMahon discuss possibilities moving forward, and this is likely their first meeting, as Khan has said in the past that he's never spoken to Shane O'Mac. With that said, Khan has also said he's open to speaking with McMahon, and Sapp adds that the AEW president has been open to the idea of working with Shane for a number of weeks. Sources in AEW told Fightful that they were not aware of the specifics of this meeting, but it's no secret that Khan has a positive opinion on WWE's prodigal son. Khan has spoken favorably about McMahon, saying in a recent interview on the Maggie and Perloff show that McMahon was welcome to stop by at any time and described him as a really nice guy. Additionally, Khan told Sports Illustrated that he has a lot of respect for McMahon as an executive and a professional wrestler and that he is always welcome in AEW. Even just talking with a McMahon is huge news for Khan and AEW as a whole, but what do those in WWE make of Shane meeting with the competition? A WWE employee who has ties with Shane McMahon told WrestleVotes that they aren't surprised by this meeting, stating that Shane McMahon is smart to jump on any potential business opportunity. At 54 years old, Shane might not want to wrestle again, especially after his previous match in the ring saw him suffer a torn quadriceps in the middle of WrestleMania 39 Sunday. Even if a match isn't in the works, AEW may be able to use Shane's money, influence, and charisma in some facet down the line outside of the ring. On Busted Open Radio, Bully Ray addressed what Shane may bring to the table and discussed McMahon's history in making deals outside the United States. I'm not saying that this conversation about the wrestling business has to do with Shane being brought in as a talent to AEW. Shane buying into AEW. Shane, I forget exactly what Shane does for a living, but it's very, very detached from pro wrestling, and I believe he does a lot of his business overseas. Maybe the business meeting is about how Shane's company can help AEW overseas and break into a different market, because I believe Shane was working on a big deal with China for the WWE. If AEW does intend to do more with a potential Chinese audience, then bringing in McMahon is an excellent move as he spent years developing media relationships in the nation. Shane has plenty of business acumen outside wrestling, as he has experience as a CEO of China's Broadband Inc., as well as You On Demand. AEW has mostly kept itself to the US and Canada since its founding in January 2019, but McMahon could be the catalyst that helps branch the company outside of its usual hotspots. On the podcast, Bully also read out a statement by McMahon who addressed what exactly was said at the meeting with AEW's top brass. The statement reads, Tony and I were connected through a mutual friend and we had a great meeting. We talked about many things, but mostly about our shared love for the business and rewards and challenges of working with family. I congratulated him on the five-year anniversary of AEW and look forward to how he evolves the business moving forward. Of course, it's possible that McMahon and Khan talked about much more than this, but for now, this is all that Shane O'Mac wants fans to know about this shocking face-to-face -face talk. We know that Shane and Khan met, that much has been proven with the photo that has since gone viral, but we now know the person standing behind the camera at this meeting. On Twitter, AEW TBS champion Mercedes Monet claimed credit for the photo, and one has to wonder if she had anything to say in the meeting of her boss and Shane McMahon. The meeting has had the wrestling world talking, but one name who isn't going to speak about it is CM Punk, who passed on the chance to comment on the SI Media podcast. Later on though, Punk was asked if he'd be surprised to see Shane in AEW and said, I don't think so, as he, like many people, especially now, think that this is a possibility. Punk of all people knows to never say never in wrestling, and that includes remaining open to the idea of a member of WWE's first family working for their biggest competition in decades. We'll have to see if Tony Khan and Shane McMahon ever come to any sort of a deal, and it would be a big win for AEW if they can use that intrigue to increase viewership. Do you think Shane joining AEW would be a good move, and what would you expect his role in AEW to be if he is indeed All Elite? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. This Saturday, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre will finally go one-on-one, -on -one, but their SummerSlam match will be officiated by a man who detests both men, Seth Rollins. 
On Raw, Rollins made clear that his word is the law and that the rules will be at his discretion, but Seth will do what he can to be an impartial, if not unpredictable, official. In a recent interview with SportsCenter, Rollins was asked if he could remain objective given his issues with both men and said he wants to see the pair decimate each other in Cleveland. With that said, Rollins said that his goal is to avoid interfering in the match, though admits that this is an unpredictable situation and he's excited to be a guest referee for the first time. He said, I hope not to get physically involved. The goal is not to be. You gotta understand the reason I'm in this position is because neither Drew nor Punk could contain themselves in the lead up to this. There was too much going on. No referee wanted to be a part of it. The match wasn't going to get sanctioned until I stepped in and said, hey, I can throw on the ref shirt. I can give it a shot. I've never done it. First time in my career. I've never at any level been a special guest referee, so I'm very excited to see what it's going to be like out there. The build-up to this match has been nearly six months in the making, characterized by numerous confrontations, verbal sparring, and heated exchanges between Punk and McIntyre. Punk has declared he's not nervous about Rollins being the referee, but fans will just have to wait until SummerSlam to see how influential Seth will be in this highly anticipated showdown. But who do you think will win this match? Will Seth Rollins cost CM Punk, get physical with Drew McIntyre, or will he remain impartial as he hopes? Let us know your predictions down below. Earlier this year, AEW made the bold decision to air footage of the backstage fight between CM Punk and Jack Perry at All In that would result in Perry being suspended and Punk being fired. While Tony Khan claimed the footage was just to deliver great content to fans, many saw it as a shot at Punk, who had some unflattering comments about AEW during a podcast appearance. Speaking to Jimmy Trena on the SI Media podcast, Punk was asked what he thought when he heard the footage would air. He said, It's kind of like, I have to wrestle Drew McIntyre, right? It's this garbage person that I don't want in my life. This is the fight game. This is the shit business. It's just like fighting in the UFC. You see these guys ripping at each other in ugly press conferences and getting personal. I don't necessarily enjoy that energy, but the payoff is I get to go in a ring and I get to blacken eyes and chip teeth and make Drew sob and do whatever else in my head that I hope to do to him. It felt really ugly for them to air the footage, but then I was like, showing that footage isn't going to help them or hurt me, so whatever. Being a top draw in two different companies is pretty wild. Thanks, guys. Though he's no longer All Elite, Punk was certainly a draw as the April 10th edition of Dynamite drew 819,000 viewers up from the previous week, but still short of breaking 1 million. Ultimately, AEW aired the footage and they can't undo that, but at the time, many felt broadcasting the footage was a low move by the company against an ex-employee. But what do you think? Would you have aired the footage if you were in Tony Khan's shoes? Or would you have gone a different way? Let us know down below. Since being officially introduced in June, the Wyatt Six has been a focal point of Monday Night Raw, but not everyone has been thrilled with the group's presentation. On Busted Open Radio, Bully Ray expressed his disappointment with how the Wyatt Six faction is presented and the frequent use of their entrance through the gorilla position. Ray's argument is that having the faction enter the same way as every other superstar undermines the mystique of the group as they have to wait backstage like everyone else. Ray recalled their dramatic debut where they took out several backstage names and suggested the Triple H-led promotion has not preserved the faction's sense of mystery since then. Ray stated that he prefers maintaining an element of enigma for such a sinister group, pointing out that revealing them as contracted talent diminishes their impact to the fans. It was on this week's Raw that members of the Wyatt Six unmasked, and while we already knew who they were, unmasking shows all fans that these are contracted talents. Ray added, This was a group who basically tried to kill people on their debut. What was everybody saying about what it looked like happened to Chad Gable at the gorilla position the night the Wyatts debuted? People were saying it looked like a gunshot to the head. That's pretty drastic. Next week, the Wyatt Six will make their in-ring debut in a six-man tag team match, and this will be a massive test as to whether their mystique can stand when they have to wrestle. We'll have to wait and see whether WWE can maintain the faction's mystique in the coming weeks, but what do you think of Ray's comments? Is WWE booking the group properly? Sound off below. Over to Dynamite as Brian Danielson had two themes of his promo to the crowd in Greenville, presence and promises, and alluded to being forced to retire from wrestling back in 2016. Brian also shared that he and his wife Brie Bella had their engagement photos taken in Greenville, prompting a chant by the AEW crowd for the former Divas champion. 
Speaking on Promises, Danielson reminded fans that he'd vowed to his daughter that he'd retire from full-time action when she turned seven and spoke of his AEW deal expiring on August 1st. These comments inspired the audience to chant thank you for an emotional Brian and voice their gratitude towards him for his contributions over the course of his career. Danielson brought up that he's never won the AEW world title despite his high-level performance since joining in 2021 and vowed to change this when he wins at All In in Wembley. It was here that Swerve Strickland interrupted to confront his future challenger, and the AEW world champion voiced his respect for Brian, but referenced his recent failures. Strickland mentioned Danielson coming up short against Will Ospreay and the Elite, and contrasted these results to his own success against the same opponents. Strickland also spoke about competing at All In last year, a show Brian missed due to injury, and made a promise of his own, saying Brian will not walk out of Wembley Stadium as world champion. Swerve's comments prompted Brian to stipulate that if he fails at winning the AEW world title at All In 2024, he'll never wrestle again, adding another layer of intrigue to the match. Before then, though, Danielson walked to the back where he was approached by Renee Paquette for comments, but also crossed paths with Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett approved of Danielson putting his career on the line, but Brian responded by challenging Double J to a match for next week's Dynamite. This will be the first singles match of Brian vs. Jarrett, and what do you think of it, and the decision for Danielson to put his career on the line? Let us know below. Right now, the NXT TNA collaboration is proving to be a hit with fans, and the one man at the center of this crossover is none other than the viral Joe Hendry. Speaking to Matt Camp on the wrestling mat, Hendry opened up about the groundbreaking nature of this collaboration and shared that he's not just appearing for NXT. As part of the partnership, Hendry is also able to train full-time at the WWE Performance Center in addition to appearing for NXT, TNA, and still making indie shows and signings. Hendry is thrilled to be part of such an unprecedented agreement and is grateful to WWE and TNA, but said he's also committed to improving his skills and working towards development. Rather than resting on his laurels as a viral star who trends on social media, Hendry said his training at the Performance Center has been part of his effort to build on his existing abilities. Hendry expressed his appreciation for the opportunity provided by TNA Wrestling and his positive collaboration with management, and is confident TNA will achieve significant milestones. Hendry will make his singles in-ring WWE debut next week when he faces Joe Coffey of Gallus, and expect to see plenty more of the Scottish star in two of wrestling's biggest promotions. Following WrestleMania 40, WWE ushered in its new era, which has been well received by fans who appreciate the changes made from Vince McMahon's lengthy tenure on top. It's not just the fans who are pleased, as several superstars have spoken highly of this new era and the roster, and you can add The Miz's name to the list of happy wrestlers. In a recent appearance on The Rich Eisen Show, The Miz remarked that he had never witnessed WWE reach such levels of popularity in his 20-year career with the company. He said, We're always evolving as WWE superstars. Whether you're a superstar or a company as a whole, our goal is to ensure that the audience gets what they need. We strive to deliver the best entertainment possible, and right now, the locker room is brimming with positivity. Triple H has truly taken the reins and transformed the show. He's provided opportunities to individuals who may not have had them before, and the results are evident. In my 20-year career, I've never seen WWE so popular. There are so many superstars who are over. When they come out, the crowd goes ecstatic, whether they're booing or cheering. The level of fan engagement is extraordinary. Currently, it's incredibly difficult to secure a spot on a SummerSlam card or any premium live event because the competition is so fierce. The Miz is very pleased with how Triple H's leadership has transformed shows and provided opportunities for talent that have provided evident results. There are plenty of superstars who are over, as The Miz said, and what do you make of his comments and the response to this era? Let us know in the comments. At SummerSlam, Solo Sokoa will challenge WWE Champion Cody Rhodes, but there's been plenty of talk about a different member of the Bloodline stealing the show. It's been reported for some time that Roman Reigns' return is imminent, with some believing it'll come at SummerSlam, and what do those in the family make to this? Speaking with Muscle Man Malcolm, Zillafatu, the son of the late Umaga, was asked about Reigns and shared that Roman is keeping any future WWE plans close to the chest. He said, 
I don't know. He doesn't tell anybody anything. Right now, it's like he's very unpredictable. But when he does come back, it's going to be crazy. Whether Roman returns this weekend or not, fans are eager to see the Tribal Chief again, though his return could spell bad news for Solo Sokoa and the rest of his new bloodline. Video game news now as the Pat McAfee pack of WWE 2K24 DLC was supposed to be available this week, despite the controversy around it, but the launch of the pack did not go as planned. Gamers who use a PS5 will have found that they were unable to download the DLC in question, and on Twitter, WWE Games said they were working on fixing the issue. Given the immense backlash to this pack, fans may be in no hurry to download it once this issue is fixed, as the pack sees Pat and his show's co-hosts as purchasable characters for WWE 2K24. This pack spawned controversy as fans feel that actual WWE talent could have filled those spots instead, and Ty Schmidt, one of Pat's co-hosts, said fans were wanting losers no one's ever heard of. Whatever fans may want, those on PS5 aren't downloading the Pat McAfee pack just yet, and there's no timeline yet as to when this matter will be resolved. AEW TBS slash NJPW Strong Women's Champion Mercedes Monet was on hand at Dynamite to watch Camille's first singles match since signing with AEW earlier this year. Camille handily defeated an enhancement talent, and Monet grabbed the mic after the match and welcomed Camille as the newest member of the Monet Corporation. Mercedes called out Britt Baker for being obsessed with her, but said she can't blame her for that, and added that Baker is suspended from AEW thanks to the Young Bucks. Baker was suspended after confronting Monet at San Diego Comic-Con, and it was interesting that Monet described the Bucks as my EVPs. Monet also made clear that the TBS title match at All In is still on, and said that AEW is her house now, a house she'll turn into a mansion, because that's how I roll. What's your take on Mercedes Monet's current run in AEW? Do you think we could see her win even more gold in the future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. MJF opened up the show dressed like a used car salesman and sporting his AEW American Championship, and took a few minutes talking and insulting the crowd. Will Ospreay cut him short and sprang to the ring, and MJF ran away to the stage and the two traded some words from this distance. Lance Archer soon marched his way to the ring to get his match going with the aerial assassin and wasted no time in delivering a choke slam to Osprey, leaving him on defense. A kick sent Archer out of the ring and helped turn the tide, and given that these two have faced several times in singles and tag matches before, there was an obvious chemistry to the bout. Osprey, despite being one of wrestling's most talented stars, felt like an underdog against the powerful Archer, who seemingly had an answer for everything Will tried. Recent booking for both men made the result predictable, but they did as well as anybody could, making it feel like Archer might have a chance. Osprey made a comeback and hit a hidden blade to pick up the win in this energetic and exciting match, but as soon as it was over, MJF ran out and attacked him. MJF was ready to hit a knockout blow until Kyle Fletcher made the save, though Don Callis was angry that his client was getting involved in this matter. Fletcher yelled at him about being best friends with Osprey and how he won't stand by and let him get taken out and delivered some choice words to MJF. Fletcher spoke about America giving him all his dreams and said he wouldn't let MJF represent the country in the way he has been doing. It's been confirmed that MJF and Fletcher will face off next week on Dynamite as the road to All In and a rematch with Osprey is proving to be filled with obstacles for the American champion. Darby Allen faced Hangman Page on this week's Dynamite, just one week removed from the pair being on opposing teams inside Blood and Guts. The two traded control throughout the match, but Page seemed to have the match won after hitting multiple dead eyes and went to finish the job with a buckshot lariat. Allen was able to outmaneuver the cowboy and rolled up Page for a huge win, shocking the cowboy and giving Allen momentum ahead of his TNT title match at All In. Chris Jericho celebrated 102 days as FTW champion with Big Bill and Brian Keith in a backstage segment. He said Keith is going to take out Katsuyori Shibata next week. Up next, Chris Statlander faced Willow Nightingale in a CMLL women's title eliminator match, and thanks to interference from Stokely Hathaway, Chris got the win. Statlander took out the security team before leaving with Hathaway to celebrate, and now Statlander has a golden opportunity to take the title from her former friend. Now, Kurt Angle's career in wrestling, both amateur and professional, is the stuff of legend, but later this year, Angle will enter a boxing ring in a very important role. 
On Instagram, Angle shared that he'll be the referee for a celebrity boxing match between Antonio Sabato, a general hospital actor, and Joe Giaducci of the Real Housewives of New Jersey fame. The fight in question will take place in the Bahamas on December 7th, and perhaps Kurt will watch Seth Rollins at SummerSlam for pointers on how to be a guest referee. For weeks now, Tommaso Ciampa has been focused on hitting an RKO on Randy Orton, but all his efforts have been in vain for the WWE Tag Team Champion. An unsuspecting Orton has moved out of the way each time, resulting in Ciampa doing more damage to himself and attempting to hit the move on Kevin Owens didn't work out either. This week, DIY shared another video, this time showing Ciampa hitting Orton's finishing move, though admittedly not on the former WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Instead, it was some random, unsuspecting talent at the Performance Center who ate Ciampa's RKO, and now that he knows he can hit it, we'll have to see if he can deliver the move on Orton himself. If last week's episode of WWE SmackDown felt somewhat strange, that's because it was taped the previous week due to last weekend's tour of Japan by the WWE roster. With so many of their top names in Japan, WWE felt it was easier to just tape the July 26th show in advance when the entire roster was around, but this led to some unique planning decisions. Speaking during a Fightful Select Q&A, Sean Ross Sapp explained that the tag team turmoil match was originally listed as the final segment of SmackDown, but was actually taped earlier. The main event of the night that saw Tiffany Stratton and Nia Jax face Mee Shin and Bayley was actually filmed before the tag team gauntlet match, but aired later in the show. WWE decided to film the segments out of order to expedite the process and get people out earlier, as the pre-taped format allowed for flexibility in the sequence of events. Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga won the gauntlet and will challenge DIY for the tag titles on this week's live SmackDown, and we'll have to see where this match falls on the card. And we're ending with WWE as not every athlete who joins makes it as a superstar, but that doesn't always mean that there's no role for them in the company. Just ask Eric Watts, not to be confused with the son of Bill Watts, but this Eric tried out for WWE in 2011's Tough Enough alongside Cameron, Ivelisse, and others. Eric was the seventh contestant eliminated and would go on to work as an extra numerous times, but now he's returned to WWE in a much more prominent role. Fightful Select's Sean Ross Sapp has reported that Eric Watts has joined WWE's writing team and that he'll be working full-time on the SmackDown side of things. While things didn't work out for him as a WWE superstar, Eric, going simply by Watts, appeared in several companies, including as Chris Bay's partner at TNA's Unbreakable event in 2019. Watts also appeared on AEW Dark, teaming with Jurassic Express in 2020, but now he's back in WWE and won't have to worry about taking bumps in the ring.